Thanks, Rory. Thanks, Karen. So I've been asked to give a uh, talk about designing and implementing a research study. This is a difficult talk to give in terms of giving you some, I think, tips that you're going to take away. One thing, uh, anybody who wants to approach me and, and get my email, I'll be happy to send you the slides because there's going to be a little bit more material in the slides that I'm going to go over. Uh, these are my disclosures. Well, what is the purpose of re research? Really, the purpose of research is to inform action. You know, the results of your research should have some kind of implication in clinical care. And if you use this as an overriding theme, uh, you'll understand that high quality is very important. As an investigator, you need to know that your self-worth is not defined by the number of citations on PubMed. It's really based on the quality of work you do. So your impact can be greater with fewer publications, and I think you should keep that as a basis of your research program. Any kind of research requires scientific rigor, and here's some criteria that mean scientific uh, rigor, but certainly the protocol needs to be adhered to. It has to be a, with ethical standards. You need to meticulously uh, keep uh, records. You need to uh, have methods of measurement that are standardized. You don't come up with your own methods of me me measurement, and I'll go through some of this. Uh, the data needs to be uh, analyzed, uh, some usually independently. It needs to be generalizable to the community as a whole. And like I said, we'll talk about this. You sorry about the typo. You really need to have some kind of working research plan. I think most people think of a research plan as, you know, what's the protocol? How do we um, uh, enroll somebody with the inclusion exclusion criteria? But it's far more reaching than that. You need to think of things about the background and justification. Why are we actually moving forward with this uh, research project? What are our objectives? What are the methods that we're going to use, the procedures of enrollment um, and evaluation? You need to think heavily about who's the research team and what are their roles and responsibilities. This is really team-based science. This isn't something you can do uh, alone. You need to have some kind of statistical expertise that can help to design and, uh, the uh, methods or the uh, um, analytics for evaluation uh, of the program. You have to think about a budget. Uh, research uh, oftentimes costs more than you get out of it uh, initially, but in terms of its impact, it can be far reaching, but the budget is very important. And you have to have milestones within a research project. The milestone isn't completion of the research project, there's milestones within the research plan itself. Some research plans are actually so well thought out and constructed, and <coughs> excuse me, and the methodology is so well, it actually becomes a publication in itself. Uh, this is really high level type of research where you could take this research plan, so this is an example of one, a prospective randomized trial of laparoscopic versus open ventral hernia repair that was done in the VA system. And as an investigator in another site, you could actually take this research plan and implement it yourself. I mean, it, it's that uh, well uh, thought out as a, as a working plan. For me personally, if I'm going to get involved in clinical research, I, I like to use a uh, checklist. And this is not my original checklist. This is something that I came across a long time ago. And it, it really is based on two questions. What is the relevance of what I'm doing? What is the validity of what I'm doing? So in terms of relevance, uh, and we'll go through this as I go through the uh, uh, talk, but it, it really is the basis of, is this something we can do? Is this something that's measurable? Uh, is it really pertinent to a certain population of patients and going to make an impact in their life cycle of care? And obviously, the feasibility. In terms of validity, and, and again, I'll go through this through part of the um, a talk, but these are the things that you need to check off. It's not that you need to check off every single line item, uh, otherwise you don't move forward with the research project because there's some things that aren't applicable. But thing, questions like, is the research question clearly stated? Is the, is the inclusion exclusion criteria free from bias? Are the study groups comparable? Uh, is it generalizable to a population that's not involved in the uh, uh, project of itself? Is there bias built into the um, uh, project? Are the statistical uh, methods and analysis um, uh, appropriate? And, and like I said, we'll go through this. So first of all, we need to think about the research question. There's some studies that don't need to be done like this that was in, actually done in a Boston a hospital that you've all heard about. Uh, but you need to ask the question, does this really make sense? You must clearly define your terms and definitions that are, and use those that are uh, well established. And if they aren't well established, uh, get collaboration to make sure what you're establishing has validity. You need to address important and relevant issues. 
it's not that you can't do something that's already been done, and there is some value to repeating certain studies, especially if you're looking at a different patient population, or there was something with that study that's not generalizable to a, a larger population. You have to understand, uh, recognize whether it's, oper it's operationalized, you can operationalize this. This means, is the methodology and the research instruments available to answer the question that you want to study? And is it within a reasonable scope? There are a lot of studies that uh, look, uh, they're grandiose and really died during the implementation phase because they're greater than uh, what can be accomplished through that uh, research group. Ultimately, the research question needs to address gaps in current knowledge that have been um, highlighted either as part of a research strategy or through the background assessment by the, of the project. You can't discount the literature review that's, that you need to do up front to evaluate the problem. This oftentimes gives greater clarity and focus to the research problem, and it may actually change the question that you're trying to answer. As a research team, it certainly broadens the knowledge base uh, of the entire team. So you may have people that have limited knowledge in a certain area but have expertise in, say, in, say statistics or methodology, and it allows uh, a greater knowledge uh, base within your research team. Certainly it improves methodology, um, so you use standardized methods of assessment, and it really contextualizes your findings. In terms of the hypothesis, uh, certainly your research should be hypothesis driven. And, and essentially what that means is that there's suggested explanations for observed relationship or uh, causal uh, prediction about a relationship among several variables. And of course there's independent dependent variables and the, and the details are, are beyond the scope of this talk. Really when, you, uh, when you're designing a research study, the research study is really done to uh, try to uh, find evidence that what you're evaluating is not true. Obviously, you're trying to reject the null hypothesis. I think most of the time we focus on studies where we're trying to prove our idea, but it actually the, the design of that should be to disprove what your, uh, what your idea is. Your study design will be different depending on what you're researching. It may be a cross-sectional study, which is kind of a snapshot of what's happening in time. It may be more uh, a pre and post observational where you do something um, uh, evaluation up front, there's an intervention, then you do evaluation at the end. Retrospective studies are often where people start and, and this is uh, often a good w uh, mechanism for introducing people into uh, research designs. It's the prospective and longitudinal studies um, that are really more valuable because the um, the prediction of what is going to occur is not known until the research is completed. Sample and sampling methods, uh, this is really about selecting a pool of participants to be in the study and this is very important because bias can be um, within a study if sampling is not uh, uh, carefully thought about. So as you're bringing people into a study, you need to make sure that, the, that there isn't bias about that population, that that population isn't unique. So there are unique populations that you study and you can't translate to that to the general population in terms of the, the question you're trying to answer. Sample size calculations is, is again very important. Sample size calculations are essentially the justification for the number of people you need to enroll into a clinical trial. Uh, this is uh, obviously for ethical standards because you don't want to enroll people in clinical trials that don't need to be enrolled in clinical trials. There's a cost uh, to that and, and obviously uh, the time uh, uh, and effort uh, resources are uh, not limitless. The other is, is that with, if not enough patients are enrolled to evaluate the problem that you're looking for, you can get type uh, 2 error, so that the, an, a false negative result from your uh, study. So it looks like that there is no difference, but there actually is a difference. It's just underpowered, not enough patients were enrolled into that clinical trial. This occurs uh, quite considerably. Uh, this needs to be defined up front. So up front you need to do a, a calculation of the sample size so that uh, your statistics are powered appropriately. The potential cha challenges of uh, sampling are the types of errors that can, uh, that can occur, uh, sampling, systemic, or coverage errors. And essentially what these mean is there's an error in the sampling size, there's an error in the, the population that was sampled, and you can't take that, tri that study and then um, use that to make clinical care decisions in other populations of uh, patients. And obviously you could understand the da danger of that if you're talking about some high-risk uh, interventions. 
In terms of validity, there's internal construct and external validity. Essentially, validity is to ensure that the research project uh, may draw conclusions that are uh, appropriate uh, to the population that, that of patients who have that similar problem. If for some reason it does not have internal construct or external validity, taking the, the results of that trial and saying that's what I can uh, translate that into my care of a patient who has a similar problem in the future, uh, again, could be inappropriate or even, even dangerous. In terms of methodology, methodology is really dependent on the type of research, whether it's qualitative or quantitative. Quantitative is the type of research that requires rigorous measurements and tests. It's very uh, structured. Uh, typically, the researcher is uninvolved in the, the collection of the, the data versus uh, qualitative, where the research is, is often intimately involved with the subjects that are being enrolled and is less structured. So the, the methodology is going to be dependent on whether it's a qualitative assessment or quantitative assessment. And again, this is where having a research team and the expertise is important. Monitoring the study is also uh, uh, needs to be thought of up front. You need some kind of data management plan, monitoring team, certainly in things that are high risk. There may be times where studies are actually stopped because the differences that are seen early on uh, are uh, great enough that it's unethical to continue with that trial. And that's part of the quality assurance program. So these people need to be involved. It's typically not done by the investigator uh, themselves. Of course, data preparation and analysis. The, the uh, data preparation is part of the statistical um, uh, work up front. The analysis is on the back side, so having that expertise is important it, to evaluate the statistical significance of that report. Just a few more slides. One is a pilot study. This is rarely done. And essentially, a pilot study is to pretest the protocol. This often will uncover logistic and practical problems in implementation. So it's kind of a, a small uh, sampling of a larger study. It can tell you things budgetary, from a budgetary standpoint. Is our methodology OK? And I certainly would recommend this in, in more high-risk studies. Conflict of interest, you have to remember this. Conflict of interest to refrain from bias within the study. Uh, last slide, research is really an iterative process, and so you have to remember that the, what you get out of uh, implementing or designing and implementing a study is maybe the first part of an iterative process that requires a reevaluation on multiple levels. And so this is actually expected and is a component of good research. Thank you very much.